Good morning, welcome to the Daily Office, and thank you for joining me. This is morning prayer for Saturday, September 26th. It's the 17th week after Pentecost and week 5 in the Psalm cycle. Add the scripture for this service, Psalm 90, and 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 1 through 20. And please join me in singing the first verse of Psalm 100 by Isaac Watts to the tune of Old 100. All people round the earth rejoice to God most high our sovereign King. Serve God with cheerful heart and voice with all your tongues God's glory sing. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, O oh God, you have been our dwelling in all generations. Alleluia, Psalm 90. And please recite it with me. O oh God, you have been our dwelling in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, and before you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us to destruction and say, Return, O children of the earth, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood in a dream. In the morning they are like grass which grows up. In the morning it flourishes and grows, and in the evening it is cut down and withers. For we are consumed by your anger, and by your wrath are we troubled. You have set our iniquities before yourself, our secret sins in the light of your face. For we pass all our days away in your wrath, our life is over like a sigh. The days of our years are seventy years, and if by reason of strength they be eighty, yet they are nothing but labor and sorrow, for they are soon over, and we pass away. And who knows the power of your anger? We fear the strength of your wrath. To, so teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O God, how long? Have mercy on us, your servants. Satisfy us quickly with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants, and your glory to their children. And let the favor of the Most High our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, grant success to the work of our hands. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, O oh God, you have been our dwelling in all generations. Alleluia. A lesson from the second book of Kings, chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. Now when Ataliah, Ahaziah's mother, saw that her son was dead, she set about to destroy all the royal family. But Jehosheba, King Joram's daughter, Ahaziah's sister, took Joash, son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's children who were about to be killed. She put him and his nurse in a bedroom, and thus she hid him from Ataliah, so that he was not killed. He remained with her six years hidden in the house of Yahweh, while Ataliah reigned over the land. But in the seventh year Jehoiada summoned the captains of the Karites and of the guards, and had them come to him in the house of the Most High. And he made a covenant with them and put them under oath in the house of the Most High. And then he showed him them the king's son, and commanded them, This is what you are to do. One third of you 
those who go off duty on the Sabbath and guard the king's house, another third being at the gate, sir, and a third at the gate behind the guards, shall guard the palace. And your two divisions that come on duty in force on the Sabbath and guard the house of the Most High shall surround the king, each with weapons in hand. And whoever approaches the ranks is to be killed. Be with the king in his comings and goings. And the captains did according to all that the priest Jehoiada commanded. Each brought his men who were to go off duty on the Sabbath with those who were to come on duty on the Sabbath, and came to the priest. And the priest delivered to the captains the spears and shields that had been King David's, which were in the house of the Most High. The guard stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, from the south side of the house to the north side of the house, around the altar and the house, to guard the king on every side. And then he brought out the king's son and put the crown on him and gave him the covenant. They proclaimed him king and anointed him. They clapped their hands and they shouted, Long live the king. And when Ataliah heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she went into the house of the Most High to the people. And when she looked, there was the king standing by the pillar according to custom with the captains and the trumpeters beside the king, and all the people of the land rejoicing and blowing trumpets. Ataliah tore her clothes and cried, Treason, treason! And then the priest Jehuida commanded the captains who were set over the army, Bring her out between the ranks and kill with the sword anyone who follows her. For the priest said, Let her not be killed in the house of Yahweh. So they laid hands on her. She went through the horse's entrance to the king's house, and there she was put to death. And Jehoiada made a covenant between Yahweh and the king and people, that they should be the Most High's people, also between king and the people. Then all the people of the land went to the house of Baal and tore it down, his altars and his images, they broke in pieces, and they killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. The priest posted guards over the house of Yahweh, and he took the captains, the Karites, the guards, and all the people of the land. And then they brought the king down from the house of the Most High, Yahweh, marching through the gate of the guards to the king's house. And he took his seat on the throne of the kings. So all the people of the land rejoiced. Here ends the lesson. And now let us pray for the church and the world. And please respond, hear us, tender God. For the mission of the church, that it may extend the peace and the love of Christ to all people, we pray. Hear us, tender God. For Don and Tom and Richard and Joe and Bill, and for all of our church leaders, for all clergy and ministers, that they may be ever faithful servants of your word and sacraments, we pray. Hear us, tender God. For unity in the church, that our scandalous divisions may be healed, we pray. Hear us, tender God. For the poor, the hungry, and the thirsty, for the destitute and the unemployed, that we may share with them the riches of creation and free the world of poverty and famine, we pray. Hear us, tender God. For Barack and Joe and John, and for all the leaders of this nation, city, and state, and for the leaders of the nations of the world, that they may bring justice and peace in all the earth, we pray. Hear us, tender God that God who has begun this ministry may bring it to fulfillment, we pray. Hear us, tender God. For the intentions of those who've asked our prayers and for all of your intentions. We pray. Hear us, tender God, together. Our beloved, which art in heaven, 
holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us pray. Everlasting God, shine your favor and mercy upon us, and grant us success in the works of our hands. May wisdom ever grow in our hearts, to the glory of your name. Amen. Alleluia, this is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia.